All this filament, an empty printer, let's print something. It's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. These cabinets back here behind me have a bunch of electronic components in them. But electronic components are small and these drawers are relatively big, so there's a lot of wasted space. So I'd like to section these off, this drawer that's from those cabinets, so I could put different parts in here. And it does have these slots in here so you can slide in dividers. And it comes with dividers, but I can never find the things. And I could easily 3D print dividers, but I don't like the spacing. I'd like to set my own spacing. Something like this, where I could just insert it, and I got a divided drawer. Now one of the problems are none of these drawers are exactly the same. One cabinet is this size, another cabinet is this size, and I have a bunch of these different cabinets. And I want to make these dividers. So I have to design different ones for each drawer and also different arrangements. That's a lot of work. Then I saw from a follower on Twitter, or X, that there's an app that you can go to online and it'll help you design these easily. Just click and download. So I went to bento3d.design. Here's a block, I'll zoom in a little bit. And now you just adjust the size to what you want. So you just grab the box here and you just slide it. So I'm gonna go 136 millimeters for the depth. And then I'm gonna adjust this here to 48 millimeters. So I'll just slide it over till I get to 48. And then I adjust the height to 27 millimeters. And once that's all set, I've basically got the outline of my drawer. Now I need to go to the grid section. So I click on grid at the top. And now just by pressing the plus signs, I can add different sections multiple sections if you want. I'm just going to do two sections horizontally and two vertically. And then I click download. Now this will actually give you a box to put this insert in with a latch and a cover. Now I only want the insert, but you can get this whole thing if you wanted. But I'm just going to download the insert by clicking on the download button. And then from there I can import it into the slicer. I'm going to use Orca Slicer and I'm going to use my Creality K1 Max Profile. And I'm going to use generic PLA at a 0.24 layer height. So nothing to change here in quality. Strength, I'm going to change it to uh, two walls. And I'm also going to go 0% infill, just like I showed in a previous video. And the only other thing, I'm going to get rid of the brim. So no brim, which it defaults to. So now I'm ready to slice this. So I slice it, and it says it will take just under 50 minutes to print this thing. And when I print it, it should look something like this on the time lapse. Just print from the bottom all the way up. So here it is in time lapse on the Creality K1 Max. Now I have an insert that easily slides right into the drawer. And I got a big section for the resistors to go in. And then I've got smaller resistors that have been pre-cut to go into breadboards or desoldered from a board, but I want to save them. Now I have a smaller slot to put those. And then I've also got another slot for surface mount resistors. I've got a whole box full of surface mount, but they all come in these little plastic bags and it's a pain every time to dig it out of there. So now I can pull out the right size, cut them to size and just drop them right in the drawer. And now I've got surface mount, small resistors for in breadboards or circuit boards already pre-cut. And then I've got brand new resistors that are in the tape. So right out of the box. And if that's still too much wasted space, you can make half size and stack them. So here's two that I made that stack on top of each other that end up the same size as this. So I got two different layers that I can just lift off the top, get to the bottom, or get to the top. And also, because these are clear drawers, I can actually write with a marker what the components are inside or what size resistor. And then when I move it maybe to a different drawer, the label goes with it. I could even 3D print that if I wanted. And so it's really easy to now label the drawers without having to put tape on here and peeling it off and putting a new label on it. It can go with the drawers. So this app allows me to make these custom inserts so easily. Just click, download, and print. I'm going to reorganize all my cabinets for all my electronics.
Now I have a bunch of these little circuit boards that I use for prototyping. I'll design them and send them off to PCBWay.com really cheap. They give you 10 boards for five bucks and I keep those in the drawers back here. So now I can organize them and use less drawers. So you can get your own circuit boards, like I said, really inexpensive at PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is a great place to get circuit boards. You can get 10 pieces for $5 plus shipping. They also have assembly service that's pretty low cost. All you do is go to the PCB instant quote, you upload your Gerber files, you tell them all the features you want, and it'll give you an instant quote. And in most cases, you can get 10 boards for five bucks. So check out PCBWay.com. So thanks to Numero Uno from X for tipping me off to this app, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.